Hey guys, it's Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In this video, we'll be going over freezing point depression, what it is, the equation that's associated with it, and, and two example problems, working through it step by step and showing you the calculation. So first of all, what is freezing point depression? Freezing point depression is uh, one of the calligraphy properties and the concept is that when you dissolve a solute into a solvent, it will cause the freezing point to decrease. For example, here I have a picture of of water, a sample of water, and we know the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. If we add some solute into the water and then mix it and then dissolve the solute, it will cause the freezing point to decrease. So instead of zero degrees Celsius, it will decrease to say negative two degrees Celsius. And just the more solute we add, the lower the freezing point will get. The equation that's associated with freezing point depression is this equation written here. Change in the temperature of the freezing point delta Tf, that's, this F means freezing, is equal to the I times the Kf times the M. I is the Van Hoff factor, and that's just uh, how many particles the solute will break up into. So for example, if you're working with something like Li, Li, um, Br, that's going to give you, that's going to break up to Li plus and Br minus. So th in this case, the I value will be two because this ionic compound will break up. But if you're working on a molecular compound, such as say CH4, we know this molecular compound does not break up into ions and when it dissolves, it just stays as CH4. So its I value will just be one. That's what the Van Hoff factor is times the Kf, which is the freezing point depression constant. And this is a constant that's uh, unique for, for every solvent. And the units for that's change in, it's in degrees Celsius divided by mol molality. And then the final variable is lowercase m molality, which is equals to kilograms of solute divided by, whoops, actually, let me switch that. It, actually, it equals the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. Great, now let's take a look at an example problems of how we can use this equation. So this problem is asking us, what's the freezing point depression when 62.2 grams of toluene is dissolved in 481 grams of naphthalene? And it gives us the freezing point depression constant as well as the freezing point of the naphthalene before we dissolve the toluene. So right off the bat, we're expecting that after dissolving the toluene, the new, the new freezing point will be lower than the original freezing point of 80.3 degrees Celsius. Since this question is asking about us about freezing point depression, let's start with the freezing point depression constant. And let's take a look at what variables are already given to us. We already know the freezing point depression. We already know the freezing point depression constant, Kf. Uh, we also already know I. First of all, toluene, it, this is the solute. This was, that's what we're dissolving. And then the naphthalene, this is our solvent. That's what's doing dissolving. Toluene, it's the formula shown right here, C7H8. We know this is a molecular substance because it just contains two nonmetals. And again, molecular substances do not break up into ions or separate when you dissolve. So that means that we know that the I value is one. So we have the I value, we have the Kf. We got to solve for the molarity and our goal is to, in the end, get to the change in the freezing point. So let's start by solving for, sorry, I mean molality. Where you got, we have to first start by solving for the molality. So molality is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. So let's get the moles of the solute. The way we get to the moles is we have to take the 62.2 grams of the toluene and then we have to divide it by its, its molar mass. So we do 62.2 grams of C7H8 and then we have to divide by its molar mass, or we can write it as multiplied by one mole of the C7H8 divided by its molar mass. And the way we get to the molar mass is just to add, take the molar mass of carbon multiplied by seven times the molar mass of hydrogen and multiply by eight. And then when we do that, we get a molar mass, 92.14 grams of C7H8 for every one mole. So we take 62.2 divided by 92.14. That's 0 0.675 moles. So we got the top portion, 0 0.675 moles. And then we have to divide by the kilograms. Oh, we have the grams, 481. So to get the kilograms, we just take the grams and divide it by 1,000. And then that will give us 0 0.481 kilogram. Now we take the top number divided by the bottom number, and that will give us the molality, which is lowercase m right here.
which is equal to 1.40 molal. Now that we have the Van Hoff factor, we have the Kf and we have the molal, let's plug it into the equation to get the change in the freezing point. So the, ch the change in the freezing point is equal to the Van Hoff factor, which we said was one, because then this is a molecular substance that does not dissociate, times the Kf, 7.00 degrees Celsius divided by lowercase m, times the molal that we got Previously, 1.40 molal. Plug that in. And that gives you 9.82 degrees Celsius. So that means the new freezing point will be 9.82 degrees lower than the original freezing point. All this question was asking us is what's the freezing point depression? So our answer could, we can just say it's, it's 9.82. But if we wanted to figure out the new freezing point, the way we do that is we take the original freezing point of 80.3 degrees Celsius, and then we subtract the change, 9.82. And so that means that the new freezing point is going to be 70.5 degrees Celsius after dissolving the toluene in the napoline. Great, now let's take a look at a second problem. This problem asks us how many grams of potassium chloride KCl would need to be dissolved in 1.5 kilograms of carbon tetrachloride to lower the freezing point by 4.4 degrees Celsius. So once again, we're talking about freezing point depression. Let's start with just the equation and take a look at what we are, what we already have and what we're trying to solve for. So we already have the change in the, the freezing point. It tells us that the freezing point is being decreased by 4.4 degrees Celsius. So we already have that. We can figure out the I. We know that KCl is an ionic substance, so that's going to break up into K plus the cation, and then Cl minus the anion. So you can see it breaks up into two substance, two ions. So that means that the I value is going to be two. So we have this as well. It tells us the freezing point constant right here. So we also have that. So then we should probably start by solving for the molality, and then from there we can get to the grams of the KCl. The change in the freezing point is 4.4 degrees Celsius. We said that the I value is 2. The Kf is 30 degrees Celsius per molal. And then we're solving for M. So to do this, we just, we just take the 4.4 degrees Celsius and then divide it by 2 times 30. And that'll give us the capital M, which is equal to 0.073. Three. And remember capital M is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms. So let's rewrite that right here. This is going to equal the moles of the solute and our solute was the KCO divided by the kilograms of the solvent, which is the carbon tetrachloride. And we already have the kilograms, so let's plug that in. So our next step, we can just cross multiply it. We can multiply 1.5 by the 0 0.0733 and that'll give us the moles of the KCO. So the moles of KCl equals 0 0.0733 multiplied by 1.5. And that's 0 0.11 moles of KCl. Now that we have the moles to get to the grams, we just have to multiply by the molar mass. So we'll set it up to 0 0.11 moles of KCl multiplied by, we want to put the one mole of KCl on the bottom so it can cancel out. Remember molar mass is how many grams there are in one mole. And then to get the molar mass, we can go take a look at K molar mass plus Cl's molar mass. And then that's 74.55 grams of KCl. So 0.11 times 74.55 gives you 8.20 grams of KCl as the final answer. And there you have two examples of freezing point depression. This is when you read the problem, and it mentions freezing point depression, start by writing this equation out and then think about which variables are you already given and which ones you are solving for. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.